I saw this guy a while ago. I like him. He does, he's an African guy. He does videos about Africa and he shows people like, um, bro, he shows people some beautiful African places, some beautiful places, dude, that you don't even know existed. Because, you know, whenever anybody says anything about Africa, it's always like a sad, it's always like poor, it's always like a disease ridden, you know. And this guy shows a completely different side of it, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Namibia, one of the most beautiful this. countries in Africa. And in this video, I'm going to be exploring it. Yeah, he makes some fantastic videos, dude. Yo, th th that kind of looks like Akon. That kind of There's a video where Akon is like this, right? I swear to God, I'm not saying it just because he's black, bro. It's because he's on the fucking truck. Africans haven't really bothered to explore. How do you stay consistent with the workout? Actually, I haven't been consistent with working out, dude. Um, I haven't been consistent because I moved, right? So yeah. But at least I've been consistent on Twitch. People need to know about Namibia. Firstly, very, very beautiful country. Number two. Oh, it is pretty. Peaceful and safe. In the oh, next it's peaceful. Days, I'm gonna be traveling across Namibia in the hopes of ending up in the desert. Well, so mom, you don't count. That Namibia is home to the. Yeah, I, I gotta go back to the gym, bro. I gotta get jacked. Been losing gains. I've been eating, but not working out, which isn't good. And finally end up at the oldest desert. Yeah, and listen, when I was doing the kicks, when I was doing the kicks, dude, I kind of got gassed out. And that's bad. I used to run. And if I'm going to run a fucking marathon with a backpack, actually, not one marathon, I'm going to lie. I'm going to tell people I'm going to run marathon, but I'm actually going to run two. Now, when I do that, as soon as I get the backpack, which, hey, it'll, I don't know how many months it'll be, all right? If I become a millionaire by the end of this year, I'll run by the end of this year, obviously, right? But I gotta do the fucking uh, thing and that will be a legendary fucking stream, dude. That's gonna be a legendary stream because you're not just gonna see me, bro. You're gonna see the demon inside of me, all right? You're gonna see that fucking tsunami inside of me. limited resources, so I wanted to make sure this trip was as cheap as possible. So I said, I don't know, that's of one time let's all sign off a tough mother. Oh, not to go over. yeah, I, I've been thinking because I've been, I've been thinking about it, dude. Uh, before I started streaming, I wanted to do a, a marathon. Um, I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to do a marathon for depression. I'm going to do a marathon for um, blood cancer, you know? And then uh, like, I started streaming and shit and I was like, you know what, dude? Why don't I just say I'm going to do one? And then I actually lie to people. And once I do the first one, only the real OGs will know. I'm not done. I'm only halfway there, you know, and I think that's going to be pretty fucking epic, you know, and then I just keep going and people are going to be like, yo, bro, you're done. I'm like, hell no, right? Halfway, motherfucker. Halfway, right? And, and just keep fucking talking, 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 talking about everything, you know, <laughs> talking about depression now. I'm fucking... I'm chasing the fucking monster, bro. I'm going to fucking quarter it. I'm going to cut it up into fucking pieces and it's right in front of me. Because that's what I think when I'm running, right? When I'm running, dude, I, I start thinking like fucking, like depression is right there, bro. And you could just grab it and you can fucking destroy it. But I'm letting it run away from me just to motivate me. You know what I mean? Bro, I think some horrible things, all right? I think some horrible things when I'm running. <laughs> some horrible thoughts, dude. I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking eat you. Oh my God, man. It's bad, it's bad. Thankfully, thankfully I love people and I'm not a fucking serial killer, dude, because Jesus Christ, the thoughts I have when I'm running, the thoughts I have about depression, dude, oh, that is not good. They are not good at all. <laughs> not good at all, dude. I'm like, yeah, I'll cut you up into pieces. Oh, not good, man. But with a Nigerian passport, I don't think so. But why? Why not? Landed in the capital city of Windhoek, and my reaction was, "Where is everybody?" 
actually are just 2.5 million people in the whole of Namibia. That's like one small part of Lagos. Namibia is one of the least populated countries in the world. Even oh. though the land area is over 824,000 kilometers square, which is almost the size of Nigeria at 900,000 plus. A hundred times square. less? It's really small if you ask me. Oh, you motherfucker. Shoot him, bro. Well, actually, that kind of looks good. Yeah, that actually kind of looks good, bro. <laughs> well, that actually kind of looks good. Hmm, should we play battleships? Hmm, maybe we should. Bro, come on. Dude, this red is so nice. This red, look at that red. Look at that red. That's nice, dude. That's a nice color. City, I could see a striking resemblance with some parts of South Africa. It was a German colony from 1884 to 1919, then recolonized by apartheid South Africa until mm. 1990. It might surprise you to know that race is South Africa called South West Africa. We arrived in the capital Roman Red, which derives its name from it's the nice. Word window. That's a nice red. It wasn't really windy today, though. My first place to stay was a tented camp I had booked online for $30 called Urban Camp. I knew I was going to be spending a while here, so I wanted to start this trip on a budget so I don't run out of money and have to trek back to my country. One of the things I noticed on arrival here was... Bro. Bro. This motherfucker is making cash. Okay. This mo Bro, look at this. <laughs> Half a million and then look at all the views he gets. Look at all the fucking views this motherfucker left. Gets, bro. Uh, popular. Look at this. 3.9, 2.8, 1.9, 1.8. This motherfucker making bank, bro. All right? He's making some good ass fucking videos. And he's making bank from this. Oh, I've seen this. I've seen this. This is... We're going to watch that. I've seen that type of fighting. Lots of 4x4 Toyota trucks with tents on them. The trucks add almost everything you will need for add. an adventure or road trip. We had a fridge at the back for drinks, pumps for your tires, cooking equipment if you do decide to go camping, and a lot more. Most I like the accent. Come for oh, time. bro, that's beautiful. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, I, I watched that video a long while ago. We should, we should probably watch it again. I think it was a, a lake that is extremely salty. Extremely, extremely salty. And um, if like birds land on it, they they get salted, you know? Tourism <coughs> the country's largest source of revenue. Seeing these vehicles... I'm pretty sure. Guys, I was missing something really... I might be wrong. This trip, which was a way to move around. Also, on looking at the map, I realized that most of the locations are planned. But I'm pretty sure he like of kilometers from went on it. And driving all that distance. And he said it wasn't that bad. Oh no, he went on a waterfall. Yeah, I think he went to a waterfall that came into the lake. To come join me on this trip. And he was like, it's not not that bad. If we're gonna drive all the way to the oldest. The waterfall, not the lake. We're gonna need to get a vehicle that could take us around. If we could get a vehicle, then vehicle. We explore the most amazing locations in Namibia. Dude, that is beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Always been on my wish list. What the fuck? Get to see later in this video, if and only if we succeed. I put out a post on IG the night before that I was in Namibia in hopes that a travel company will reach out to us for. A hey, based, 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 based. They should, because this guy makes great videos. The next morning, we got the biggest surprise ever. One of the biggest travel companies in Namibia called Gondwana. Also, motherfucker, why did you... Oh, these ones. What am... Oh, never mind. What am I? Never mind. Why did this motherfucker just post it one day before, bro? Come on. Elections had reached out to us and was willing to help us plan our trip and also give us a brand new vehicle to move around. We couldn't believe our luck. Vehicle. God was on our side. This is our vehicle. It's my box in the back there. So 4x4 has a camping tent on top. It's like a new vehicle, actually. I'm excited to see what the country holds. So why don't you guys come along with me? So let's go. One of the great parts about visiting a new country... Dude, I'm always shocked. So <coughs> I'm shocked to a new... Okay. So, I'm Mexican. Everything I had heard about 
Africa is like poor, you know, all that shit, you know, all of that shit. Dude. And I never thought they would have so much fucking protein, but it seems like every single one of their meals has way more protein than anywhere else I've ever seen in the world. Like, these motherfuckers eat more protein than the Americans, than us Mexicans, than the English, than everybody, dude, than everybody. It's weird. Like, it's weird. And and in my mind, I would always have thought, well, they don't have that much to eat, and protein is usually, like, you know? But I, I remember watching a video from the Best Ever Food Review Show, and, dude, they, like, it was a fish soup. But this wasn't like fish soup, dude. This was fish with like a hundred milliliters of water. And it was just fish. Fish and a tiny bit of water. And I'm like, bro, this is the world's best fish soup ever. The world's best served fish soup. Because it had hundreds of fish. And everywhere else you go for fish soup, it's just like stock. And like a piece of, a measly piece of fish. And uh, bro, these motherfuckers eat better than everybody else. Like what the fuck? Mini, aren't you part black? You're still Latino? Yeah, I'm still Latino. But I'm pretty sure I'm not uh, part black. I'm not Afro-Latino. Um, I um, I've got Native American from my grandma. I've got Native Mexican, like, like Native in, in Mexico from my granddad. I've got... Um, um, from my mom's side, I've got Jewish who were ran, f who were like kicked out of Spain. And from my dad's side, I've got Spanish side. You know, I've got Spaniards. So I'm like, I'm a, I'm Mexican, a hundred percent, dude. <laughs> I'm a mix, dude. I'm a mix, you know. Yeah, I'm Mexican. Online, her name was Woven. Yeah, Spanish, Jewish. Uh, Native American, Native Mexican, I'm Mexican. She's not the biggest YouTuber in Namibia. So where are we going to go anyway? We're going to Pastora. She told me about the local spot in Vindu called Sia's Kitchen, where we could try out some of the best Namibian delicacies. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, when I said we're Mexican, I'm sorry for pausing the fucking video, but the video is nice. When, when I was, when I was saying that I'm Mexican, dude, I saw a fucking video that I, I got to watch with you motherfuckers. Some fucking Mexicans, all right? Yeah, and I'm gonna say it like that. Some fucking Mexicans who are like, who are like, okay, um, they give them, they give them like uh, the the genetic code test, right? They give them the genetic code test, and they say, uh, what's Mexican? It says fifty percent Spanish, fifty percent uh, like Native American, and they're like, uh, what's Mexican? And I'm like, bro, that's what a Mexican is, you fucking retard. Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, uh, I don't see Mexican. I'm like, okay, you are retarded, bro. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mmm. Uh, yeah, that, that, dude, that video pissed me off so much. It was, it was like Spanish and East Asian. Mm -hmm. East Asian, like the people that came over through the Bering Strait. Right, that, those were the two genetic makeups of those people, and they're like, uh, "Where's Mexican?" I wanted to smack the motherfucker. Please with me, cause I'll eat all the food, and then you'll be very hungry. Challenge accepted. Oh really? Are we challenging? Chal challenge okay. accepted. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Tayo versus Woven. Who's gonna eat more food? Let's go. Oh, bro, he's gonna eat way more. <laughs> Hey, I like her. I like her. Hey, thanks for the biddies, bro. Greens for days. Thanks for the 25 bits, man. Namibia versus Nigeria. Oh, bro, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. I like her attitude. Namibia is known to have one of the best beef in the world and also one of the few African countries to export beef internationally. Oh. Namibia exported over $52 million. Now I will let your let, let your rose block on my son. Man, you got America cut. Greens for days. I'm feeling 25, bro. Oh, you know, Amit, so you know what's sad about that, bro? That stream, that stream that you saw, I couldn't save it because that guy posted the fucking dick, you know? And yeah, I had to delete it and like I had I had done the, the, the fucking VOD and I deleted the part of the cack 
All right, actually the three cocks, it was three big black cocks. And I, I deleted that part, but then I deleted the original and I deleted the original too fast. And so I lost all of that, dude. And so the only clip that remains is the Dunkle vs. Latina throwing her away. That's the only clip that remains from that stream. You know? And that stream was so good, bro. That stream was so good. I like that stream so much. The impersonations, the fucking everything. Greens for days. Thank you for the fucking gifteds. I mean, thank you for the sub, dude, for two months, and thank you for all the things. So, yeah, whoever saw that stream, that was a private stream, and nobody will ever see that stream ever again. Nobody will ever see, you know? That was a great stream, bro. That was good vibes. That was great vibes, dude. That was fun. That was me being a fucking dumbass. You know, I love that stream, bro. But you know what? You can't be sad that it's gone. You're going to be happy that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, W Life Outlook. W Life Outlook, bro. One of the things I noticed about Namibia is oh my we God. Have so many amazing resort destinations scattered all over the city. And our plan was to stay in as many as possible. Damn, red sand. Look at the iron. Yeah, I was giving topping up just in case you know anything happens. We have to mm. be sure that we have enough for us. It's not a country you want to get stuck in because yeah. it's hot and Definitely. there's nothing for long distances. Definitely. Oh, it's like uh, Australia. It's like Australia, right? The first place on our list was the Kalahari Annie, which was around three hours. Dude, that road, road looks way better than any Mexican road. fucking road you'll find. Namibia is that looks like an American the road, man. Best and quality roads on the continent. And to be honest, yeah, really yeah, the outback of Australia where if people got stranded, it's like a day. Stretch our legs. Uh, I had a day to get to them. The in Africa, but now I'm so W and Sunset <laughs> Bro, not only that, there, there was like three cocks and then one guy was shoving a cucumber. <laughs> so it was four. <laughs> but I lost a great vote because of it, man. Damn, dude. At least I didn't get banned, you know? First thing though is Namibia practices the right hand. You know, you're gonna find the like gonna find the light, dude, at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Hey, I don't think that cucumber found the light at the end of that guy's tunnel. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh. No snitches, no snitches. No snitches. You always gonna be. Oh. oh, is that tomato? That looks like tomato, bro. That looks like iced tea juice. Iced tea juice. Oh, oh, she likes him. Oh, she likes him. Hey, go, go ahead, tell you. Look at this. 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 Look at how she looks at him. Look at this. 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 Mmm. Oh, and he's got soft eyes too. He's got soft eyes. This motherfucker. Oh, he's raising her up. Look at this. I thought it was just like going to be a small lodge. I like him. Oh, there's even a pool there. Yeah, we have two pools. Oh, wow. Kalahai Anib was like a beautiful oasis in the middle of the... Oasis. Desert. Because of his location, one of the activities... To oh, it's a tiny ass pool. ...was the game drive, which brought us close to the animals in the safari. We'll be heading to the dune where you guys will see a lovely Namibian sunset. Namibia has some of the most amazing wildlife in any African country with animals. That's uh, with drone. That's those are drone shots. The national animal is the oryx, which can be seen on the country's coat of arms and you need to live in just the countryside. <laughs> After a long drive through the beautiful safari, we climbed up one Bro, of if you get stuck there and a the fucking lion comes up, what happens? Where are the guys with guns? Huh? Where are they? Oh, the music is epic too. Welcome to Namibia. How do you do it? Yeah. Dude. Like this. Oh, oh, like this. Like this. <laughs> oh, like this. Yes, Namibia. I feel like I'm throwing gang signs. This is Namibia. Oh! This is up north and this is into the Caprivi. So Namibia. Here, this is more to the south. Mm. 
So the, the okay. west side is this side and this is more to the east side. Welcome to Namibia. <laughs> Mexico would be like this. Check out the songs. Like that, no. So beautiful. How do I do Mexico, bro? You can never go wrong with Welcome to Mexico. <laughs> Welcome to Mexico, I say. Yeah. Good one. And when they come from here, your friends will be drinking your beer. Oh. Drink your beer now, guys. <laughs> I like that one. I like that vibe. Yeah, yeah, the drone videos. Yeah, that's a drone video too. Good morning. Just woke up now and I'm about to grab breakfast. That's oh I was gonna say that's a Naruto. No, I won't show that chili. I pick like one, two, three. I'm gonna demolish all of this before we head out on the road and continue our job. What is that ice cream? I have like one million bags on me. You ready? Yeah. We set off on the second leg of our trip to a place called Sosos Blade. The drive took us about five plus hours on a mostly gravel road. Dude, one cool thing about road the drone shots are so good. Different towns and in different areas to either buy supplies or buy fuel to top up. And currently we're in a town fuel a hundred bucks. Called That's expensive. Our last bend before we leave the express and head on to the gravel road. Well. Oh. Yeah, that's expensive. Reducing our tire pressure made it soft, so it could control. Mm, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Improving so it doesn't burst. And grip. No, and so it doesn't our burst. Our rides were numerous beautiful rock formations, and we also came across many animals. We saw a big ass Komodo dragon. It's very ah! Get up. Going what the fuck, the bro? Did he just throw? What the fuck? Driving what the fuck? Felt like we were taking a long drive. Wait, they're not that fast. Even though the roads were gravel. That's not a Komodo dragon. Smooth, and we're driving at 80 kilometers per hour on this road. To be honest, I had a lot of doubts if we we're going to make it to the desert because we still had a long way to go. Traveling for me is always filled with uncertainty, especially for a new location. And you can never be too sure yeah. what to expect. What if it breaks down? So to play is a very popular spot in Namibia. It has some of the biggest and most beautiful sand dunes that form different patterns when Oh my fucking god, dude. Angles. That's a lake. Yeah. Inside Sosus Blay is a place called Dead Flea, which was home to the most famous salt pan in yeah. Namibia. To access yeah. it, we had to drive into the Namib Noklof Park and pay a fee. The prices differ based on where you are from. Cheaper for Namibian oh, than wow. for tourists like me. The ride takes another 30 okay. plus along the time. Based, based. Final destination. You get a tax for being a tourist. Of our driving skills. Good. We make sure we don't get stuck. Because if we get stuck, <laughs> we have to push the car. Oh wow. This place looks pretty incredible. I wanna do like a hike all the way from here to the top of that one. Dude, imagine how hot those sand dunes are going to be though. I'm about to run down this hill. Hopefully I don't break my neck. Before I go down, I want to tell you guys about Dude, the going down it with a fucking all my music from music is an a, a sand a sandboard or whatever the fuck sand provides me with restriction yeah that's that you can choose from imagine you had no shoes oh it's impossible bro it's impossible no 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 that's impossible to traverse without shoes dude the the heat would be too much like you need something on your feet it's actually impossible you need something there's no way no shot no shot I'm telling you this because like I'm I live in Mexico and if I go to the fucking beach, I can't walk around the beach with, without like shoes. Well, without sandals at least, because otherwise, dude, the sand is piping hot. No, no. That you can choose from a large array of music. You can even decide to divide the music into different sections. You can remove the beats. You can remove the drums. Epidemic sound yeah, epidemic sounds is good. Epidemic sounds is great. Like in the description. Thank you. you know what? Dude, get a fucking board and go shh. Sh 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 
first time was one of the most surreal sights ever. There were so many trees that were dead, but still standing, and it was eerily cold. Yeah, they're fossilized. Fossilized. Oh, he's gonna hear it. Oh! <laughs> he's made it. <laughs> yeah, those trees are fossilized. Back when the river flooded the right? area, which led to the growth of these trees. However, oh, some years back. And the sand dunes encroached on this area. Wait, okay, wait, but how many years though? Wait, how many years? How many years? From reaching the trees, which led to them dying. They're dead trees, but they're still out. It's like they're still standing there, and they've been standing like this for hundreds of years. Oh, okay. So lots of people come here to come and experience. Yeah, the 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 salted, nice and salted. I've ever seen. They're preserved because of the salt, and the bacteria can't eat them. So the only thing that can happen is like uh, normal decomposure and 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 uh, fucking sand hitting it because bacteria can't eat it. Too much. Too much. Uh, too much um, salt concentration, probably. Hot in the afternoon. So they, yeah, so they're Love fossilized. In Africa is that the more you explore, the more you get to see places that you never knew existed. Like this is one of them. I never knew this actually existed. It's so remarkable, man. It's so remarkable. Our rest stop for the night was deeply in a conservatory area owned by Gondwana Lodges, who had helped us plan our trip. They own over 47 lodges across Namibia, and be sure to check them out if you ever plan on visiting. This is a lodge called the Desert Star Dune Lodge. This is one of the most beautiful hotels or beautiful lodges I've had to stay in. Guys, just check this out. The sun is setting. It took us four hours to get here, and trust me, bro, is worth it. In total, they have nine rooms, and then there's a big restaurant. Come on! The Kalahari. I always wonder why people actually have to leave Africa and say they are going to Dubai when they can just come to Namibia. Everything you want to get in Dubai, you can get it in Namibia. You can get it cheaper, and then if you're African, you're also in Africa, and then your money spreads around Africa. I want to enjoy the sunset. I want to enjoy it and experience it. But before it fully sets. Let me show you guys what a room here looks like. I've never seen landscapes quite like this in my life. Okay. It looks like Australia to me. Because of the red, uh, red sand. The best thing about staying here is this bed. Let me show you what you can do. It had a one of a kind experience where you could pull your bed out of the cabin and lie under the stars at night. Oh, this okay. was the first time I ever saw the Milky Way. Spending the night here made me weep. Oh my god, are you bed. kidding me? And didn't have to spend the night watching the stars beside <laughs> Richard. So don't you ruined it, bro. It. For those that have women, for those that have boo or bay in their life, you can cuddle up here at night and their blankets. That yeah, but what about? But, but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You were telling me that the fucking. Uh, 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 lions live here, bro. You were telling me that some fucking, like, you know, animals live there. What? Like, come on, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I am not taking the risk. I'm not getting eaten by a pride of lions. So get ready for a social media detox. The great thing I loved about this location was how remote it was. It gave you the feeling that you were truly alien. Hell no, bro! Views from the room were truly I'm not getting stung by some weird ass fucking desert spider. Hell no, that rolls down the fucking sand dunes. Hell no, I'm not getting bitten by that shit. Everything is really beautiful, yeah. Sorry. Hell no. Also, I don't see any animal right there, so collection which was called desert grades oh bro totally different wait that reminds me of the fucking james bond uh, film there's a james bond film with a thing like that outdoor pool and was also a great place to stay if you are coming with your partner or family after experiencing so much of the desert we set our sights on a coastal town called swakopmund swakopmund Guys, we are officially in the desert now. Oh, now, oh, now you're in the desert. What? Wait, where were you? <laughs> where were you before? <laughs> wait, that was in the desert. Swakopmund was gonna take us about four to five hours, so we had to. Bro, you went from one desert to another desert. Circumstances with a four by four leads to a heavy fuel intake. 
The day oh, the fuck? Namibia cost around 24 <laughs> Namibian dollars per liter, which was a small price to pay if you don't want to get stuck in the desert. Mm-hmm. Because Namibia is so big, there were moments where we drove for 20 to 30 minutes without coming across a single vehicle. Also, your car has to be in tip top shape because breaking down here is not even something I would wish on my enemy. The great part about the tented 4x4 though was that worst case scenario, we sleep on the roof. But I prefer the beautiful lodges. We uh. guys made it to the Tropic of Capricorn. We actually don't know what it means, but I've never heard about it before. Oh, that's um. We drove past one of the most amazing sights ever. That's like a Tropic of Cancer too, right? Beautiful flying birds called the flamingos. Oh wow! Good night, mom. Love you. The first time I ever saw a flamingo was in Tanzania. Did he film this or was this stock footage? Yeah, were in the hundreds of thousands. You know? They stretched further than my eyes could see. Because they feed on algae and shrimp, their body metabolizes the pigment, which turns its feather pink. They also sleep on one leg, which is ridiculous to me. Why would you sleep on one leg? Yeah. Driving into Swakopmund. I just can't wait to get there because I need to relax. I've been driving for the past five minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Finally arrived Swakopmund. Oh, that's a cool place, dude. This is nice. Contrast to a whole trip through the desert. Now, oh, this is where the rich people live. Rich people. Kilometers of coastline. Swakopmund is also the biggest coastal town, and most Namibians visit here for. Yeah, time. rich people. Yeah. First time walking on the streets. It looks very similar to South Africa. Very similar to Cape Town, actually. And also the temperature too also feels like I'm actually oh, in Cape wow. Town. Along the ocean front were many amazing real estate oh, wow. that were mostly used for hotels, Airbnbs, and vacation homes. Oh, the average price of a townhouse here was yeah, of around $100,000. Yeah, of course. One of the most prominent sites in the city is the Swakopmund Light. Yeah, Island. all the foreigners live there. Why wouldn't you? Like, let's be honest. What do you think of what you're seeing for the first time? We've been stuck in the desert for a few days now, and this is quite refreshing. Logan, what's up, baby? And I linked up with the guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be epic. Though, yeah, sure. it's going to be epic. Yeah. You're going you're gonna show me how you guys do it here, right? <laughs> yeah, no, for tonight, definitely. <laughs> okay. We're gonna start a very oh, early they're going out. Early morning, so I hope okay. you're oh, they're going <laughs> out. They're going out. We're strong in Nigeria. Don't oh, worry. no. <laughs> Our spot for the night was a delight hotel, which was a five minute walk from the waterfront. Ooh, okay. okay. What's this called? Onyama. Ooh. What is that, ribs? What is Onyama. that? Intestines. What is that? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I was gonna say something that was funny, but maybe not. I was gonna say, "Hey, can you play in the jungle?" No, 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 not that. One. Not not in the jungle, fucking Lion King, bro. Oh my god. Oh no. The next day we headed out to meet a tall company called Sandwich Stores. Sandwich? Riding on the sand here, you need to yeah. be skilled, either you're skilled so that you don't get stuck or you just get a tour company, which is what we did. And we linked up with this guy and he's gonna take us all the way to Sandwich Harbor. Alright guys, oh, they're building uh, another... we're gonna go off-road now. They're building so another park. We're gonna basically um, switch off the car's traction control because that's one of the procedures that we do. Mm. The traction control has to be off and then we're gonna engage into H4, which is your normal 4x4. Uh, as I always tell my clients, uh, this is the part where we say we're going to have some African massages all the way. Let's go. I had seen numerous videos oh my of God. the desert hitting the ocean, but I haven't. Oh my God, dude. Fully for myself. 
on to now. This is the only place in the world for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers where the world's oldest desert, the Namib Desert, and the Atlantic Ocean meet. Oh my fucking god. In the world and has one of the highest dunes in the world. The Namib Desert is the oh my god in the world and it has endured for Yo, why why isn't there some motherfucker, some Instagram viral motherfucker that tries to go from like over here with some some kind of board that works both in sand and water. Can you imagine that? They go shh and then they end up in the water. Come on, that's a great idea, bro. For all you TikTok fuckers, that's a great idea I just gave you. And it extends That's a great TikTok video, bro. The Atlantic coast of Africa to Angola. Come on, that's that's doable, bro. That's doable. That's doable. Super doable. Super doable. You gotta hit that bottom part right. You gotta find one that's like this and it's close to the water. Because that'll slow you down a lot. You can experience Tokomi, who is familiar with the roads, because driving here needs the highest skill level. Oh my god! Okay, that's insane. God really created this earth like I think it's one of the most unique landscapes I've ever seen. God did. I'm Namibian and I've never been here. Ah. This is crazy. <laughs> let's go, let's go! You're running like a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fucking fall and die like a gazelle too. Ah, that's a cool place. Also, the time of the day matters because during high tide, this road we're driving on. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. By the sea. We drove all the way up to the highest dune in Namibia, and this was the best fun I've had in a while. Up next, lunch. Ooh. Yeah. Mom, I thought you were leaving, huh? But you stayed for the video. God did. <laughs> I posted a picture online, you'd be like, where in the world are you? But yeah, I'm in Namibia. Cheers. <laughs> Visiting Namibia Cheers. really changed my mind about what this beautiful African country really has to offer. That's a nice Namibia church. I really expected to live feeling so mind blown. The country is so big that you need probably two months or more to really experience it fully because all parts have something to offer and I am definitely coming back. This is one of the reasons I love traveling. It helps shape your perception of the world and sometimes it blows your expectations. You look at Namibia's economy, uh, the top four sectors mm. of Namibia's economy will be your mining, mm -hmm. fishing, okay. farming, mm. then tourism. Oh so wow. Farming is big in Namibia. Hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed my stay in Namibia and I can say Namibians are one of the most hospitable people I've ever met in any African country. The day I arrived here, my drone stopped working and just from posting on Instagram, a stranger was willing to lend me his oh, to take wow. most of the shots you saw in this video and we are now friends. The most important thing about travel for me isn't just the location but the amazing people you what a place meet along the way and I did meet many Namibians. Shout out to Gondwana Lodges for sponsoring all our accommodation and our logistics for this trip. <laughs> if you're coming to Namibia, definitely check out the link in the description below to reach out to Gondwana and tell them Ty and Richard. Dude, that's living the dream. They get paid and it's for free. Come on, bro. Are just friends that you haven't met yet. So will I recommend Namibia 100%? It's such a cocktail of amazing activities and experiences. Is there a country that you wouldn't recommend? The world should try out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, that's a question, right? Subscribe. See you guys on the next one. See you, Tayo. <laughs> yeah, look, this is the this is the deadliest lake, right? But I'm pretty sure he went to a um, waterfall, not the deadliest lake itself. Look. It's said to be one of the most dangerous lakes in the world. Lake. Lake Natron is said. Look at that, bro. Viral, viral beginning. Viral beginning. Look at this. That's hot enough to give you third degree burns in five seconds or less. What makes the water so deadly? Its corrosive water can eat away human flesh and kill you by poisoning. Ah! Are you inside the water? No. What happens if I touch it? No. Soapy. It feels it's soapy. Like pictures. These are all animals being turned to stone by an African lake in Tanzania called Lake Natron. How is that even possible? And...
I'm pretty sure if you touch it, it's gonna feel soapy, and it's it's because um, it's quite high, like it's ba it's basic, and whenever you touch something that is uh, like basic, your oils in your hands start turning into actual soap. Because it's it's one of the processes that you need uh, to make soap, right? Like you get fat, and you get um, sodium hydroxide and a bunch of other shit. Yeah, and that's how you make soap. Lake Nacho is so it feels soapy. Dangerous lakes in the world, as very few living things can survive here. Today, I'm gonna travel down to Tanzania. And it's like to see slick. How true this is, and if possible, I'm gonna try touching and tasting this water. To get to the Bruh. Dili Lake, we would have to fly six hours by air to Ethiopia from Nigeria, then hop on another flight for five hours to Arusha. Oh, funny, Kassid. Just landed in Arusha. I just can't remember what you need to make uh, soap. I remember you need um, sodium hydroxide. Did you ever watch John John Rune? Yeah, of course I did. Yes. The guy that we meant to book started saying something different from what we agreed on. So now we have to find a new cab. Nah, our stops are outside, but. Yeah, but never, never when I was a kid, because I'm pretty sure he was done fighting when I was a kid. Awesome brother. I'm trying to find well, another vehicle. Sometimes things don't go as planned. I, have to I can't remember watching a fight of his on TV. Eventually, after looking around for a couple hours, we finally found a new driver to take us around. It was. I can't remember watching Tyson fight, but getting watching Tyson get knocked knocked out. I remember that in 2002, 2003. Yeah, Roy Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Junior, Roy Jones Jr. Black boxer who didn't have a jab, just a leaping left hook. Murderous leaping left hook. On the way, there is so many interesting, like a view and the landscape up to Lake Nacho. Finally, got some money. By 12, we have to probably buy like 70 liters because we are going to be very far. We have to fill up the tank, and I think it's and some extras. We're good, let's go. Wait, that guy had something on his wrist, he had a ball on his wrist. Uh, what did the sound go? On the top of the hill, we got oh. to go. Bro! Ooh, what the fuck? That's a nice shot. That's a nice shot. Bro, why does it all of a sudden go silent? This is a great Rift Valley. Yeah. This is a great Rift Valley. Is it like copyrighted? The Great Rift Valley stretches from the Middle East in the north to Mozambique in the south. The area is geologically mm. active Roy Jones was and frequent earthquakes. This same road led us to a big hole in the ground, which made me wonder how we got there. Roy, way too big, bro, for, for Floyd. Way too big. It was called the Hole of God. I've heard different versions of the story from our driver. Jesus, look at that. Meteor from the sky hit the spot and created a big dome. Look at that. Yeah, that's probably media. I mean, looks like a volcano, no? I got to experience the elements of nature in its rawest form. Because it's not that big. It had a big dome. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Also, it's not, um... Hmm... It's not nicely and symmetric. It's not nice and symmetrical, you know, kind of how how um, um, craters are from from meteorites. It's kind of asymmetric. Might be on a volcano. I don't know. Yeah, he's too big, bro. He's too big. Fucking Floyd was what one forty five, one thirty five, some shit like that. Little desert tornadoes dotting the landscape. Crazy rainfall. 
and lots of animals. Probably a sinkhole. Finally, we continue. A meteor the would have been more symmetrical, no? Guy. This is the Maasai Sacred Mountain and the only active volcano in East Africa. I've never seen an active volcano before and it was a blessing to experience one. What the Apparently, fuck? Apparently, you can do a six hour climb to the top at night, which I didn't plan on doing because I was lazy. <laughs> Probably would smash uh, Floyd. I mean, Roy did a bunch of steroids, so possible. And also, the left hook is really good against Floyd's um, defense, especially like a leaping left hook. It's very good, it's right there. Because of his style, it's bladed like this when the hook comes in like this, you know? Instead of the jab that is gonna hit the shoulder. Preparation for the next morning. Good morning. Very early morning. The sun is just about rising and it looks pretty amazing. I wanna start my day with some coffee. <laughs> and the whole world drinks coffee, huh? Let the adventure begin. I don't drink coffee. I wonder if I should. I wonder if I should. <coughs> Maybe I should give it a go. Maybe I should give it a try. You know what I should give a try to? Cocaine. I should give that a try too. Yeah, definitely nothing bad can come out of it. To find our way, we needed a tour guide. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good. You sleep well? Oh, his English is very good. Good morning. Oh, yeah, good morning. How are you? The Maasai's here are the tour guide and you have to hire one to take you around. No. It's one of the major means of employment here and helps to contribute to the feeding of the families and the communities. Finally. Now we have to walk the rest of the journey on foot. If you can't learn to drink with a sugar and cream, mm. how deserted and alone we were in the vast landscape. Everything was dead quiet. <laughs> the just right ahead with the volcano in the background, towering above everything. Reminded me of that verse in the Bible that says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." How many minutes walk do we have? Mm. Do we a Christian man? He's a Christian man. Oh, pink flamingo. He's a, he's a different shade of black. What makes you so deadly? I had, I had some friends in England. I had some friends in England like him. It's a different shade. It's purplish. I had friends in England like this. It's a very nice color, dude. I like it. I like it a lot. Why? It's good. What makes you so deadly? This is uh, salty water. Lake Natron is a mineral rich lake in northern Tanzania at the border with Kenya. The water in the lake comes from a waterfall which flows down the mountain. It's usually Because usually it's brown like him. With varying shades of orange you and know? pink as well. So what makes the water What so the fuck was that? You see, the water in this lake is considered deadly because of its extremely high alkalinity. Mm. The pH levels of the lake is as high as that of ammonia. This gives the lake its rosy hue. Unlike other lakes, the water doesn't flow out and keeps getting collected. The temperature of the lake can rise to 60 degrees Celsius when the water evaporates and it leaves behind high amounts of salt which makes it have similar properties with the Dead Sea. So if this is dangerous, you would expect that animals wouldn't be so foolish to come close. Well, not quite. Dry bones. During rainy season, where we're currently walking now, we'll probably be submerged in water. The lake has a mirror-like surface that tricks beds into diving in and leading to their deaths. Any bed that dives into the lake are calcified. This means that the salt in the lake... Depending on the duration, right? ...like stone. Despite so many beds dying in Lake Natron, there's a particular species flourishing, the flamingos. They are so well adapted that they feed on the salty algae growing at the bottom of the lake. Lake Natron is essential for its survival. Their Jesus Christ! If guards them from bonds, the lake is a haven for flamingos, as we saw so many when we got there. Oh, they run, dude! Bro, look at look at the music change that this motherfucker puts in. Now, this motherfucker thinks about his videos a lot, a lot. I appreciate that. 
Right, like you notice the speed and the music and everything like that. See? Will I turn to stone? Most people say Lake Natron is one of the most dangerous lakes in the world. So they can turn you into stone. But apparently, I'm still human. He so should have. You don't turn to stone. He should have brought a pH. By some weird mistake, your entire body would harden and be preserved. And if people found you hundreds of years later, you might still have your hair and organs intact, just like the. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Where did the water in the lake come from? As a curious person, my plan was to find the source, so we headed back to camp. Really, I'm very happy to meet uh, different people from uh, different countries because it feels very good. But also, it's very good to meet people like you who they are very happy. I hope now we are going to the breakfast, but after that we are going to the waterfall. We are back at the uh, Jesus, right? Hello. That's Christian music, bro. <laughs> No, 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 you, you, you are waiting for you. Saint Jesus. Our lodge was a tented camp out in the wilderness. So at every right? time we kept experiencing different elements. Jesus. Staying so far from civilization helps you realize nature is Jesus. constantly changing. There is a sandstorm approaching. It's time we see the mountain anymore. Yeah, that's that's Christian music, 100%. That's African Christian music. Oh, it is. It is Christian music. Look up the advert I get, bro. <coughs> Get close with God. Mm. Mm. Okay, these people are high. Okay, these people are high, bro. These people are high. These people are fucking high. <laughs> these people are fucking high. <coughs> bro, come on. Don't fuck me like this. I just want to show you where we're currently staying at. It's a place called African Safari Lodge. Yeah, this is the tent. There's a spot outside where you can sit down. So let's go in. One king size bed and one Ooh. normal bed. That's the toilet there, and this is the bathroom. That's for me and, and your wife. And, and the other one is for your cock ass self. So you can watch me yeah, bang her. Pool right here. Well, that's a nice pool. During the day, we had multiple animals pass by close to our camp. Most of them were giraffes, and I guess they were looking for some company. How the fuck does an animal like that happen? Our tour guide notified us of a waterfall called Ngari Seru Waterfall. Where is the waterfall? Bro, that's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. So guys, we're starting off on another interesting adventure. There's a place here where you can find a waterfall and that's where we're headed to now. All the way up there. But to get there, we would have to go on a difficult one hour hike to get to the source. Bruh, it's a one hour hike. Yeah. That's not difficult. That's a short ass hike. Lonely, that's a short ass hike. Water at different intervals. It was difficult to climb most of the rocks. As short hike. I hiked. One hour is nothing. One hour is nothing. And go all the way there. Oh, look at the, look at the beef. Look at the beef. Heavy current. Ah, my shoe is all soaked up. Bro, that other motherfucker's doing it without shoes. <laughs> that motherfucker's walking around barefoot. Oh, he's got some kind of sandals. Oh, bro, look at, bro, look at the difference in in shade. You know, bro, I had, I had some, like I said, I had some friends in England that were black, but some were like him and others were like him. And when I was a kid, when I was a kid, like all the black people I knew were like this, you know, like this. And only until I got to England and I saw some people from Congo that I saw this skin color and I was like, oh shit. You know, like there's black people and there's black people. You know? This is such a fucking great dude. Look at the shade. Oh, it's beautiful shade. You know, and you know what shocked me about England, dude, is that not only do you get like like the different shades, but you also get like you get white people that you're like, oh shit, like this mother's fucking transparent. Like people think I'm white, but in England people were like, no, you're not white, you know? 
And I was like, oh shit, now these motherfuckers are white. <laughs> like, I can see the veins, I can see everything. Like, what the fuck? Some pale ass motherfuckers. I like that contrast. It was interesting to see. Because in Mexico, that contrast doesn't exist. It's not that big, you know? It's like people like me, and then it's like uh, brownish people, like him. You know, it's not as big of a contrast. And that was shocking. I remember, I remember thinking that. Cause like he's like he's like American black. The other guy's like African. Passes. Oh wow. Tikitaka waterfall. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tikitaka. It has been a very eventful day at the waterfall. Why Tikitaka? When I was coming down here, I was actually. Scared. Yo, partially white. Yeah, think. but look, look, look. This what I look when I burn, right? <laughs> but no, dude. I had friends in England that were so white, yeah. white, 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 white. So zero melanin. Zero melanin, bro. And I had friends in England that were a hundred melanin, you know? Like, and in Mexico, you find people who are like, let's say, 25 to 60, let's say, right? 25 to 60 is what you find here. But in England, dude, you would see people who are zero, no melanin in their system. And then you would see people who full on a hundred thousand percent, you know? Dude, no, the whites in the UK, they would be burned, bro. Is there a white population in Mexico? Yeah, it's like 50-50. Well, I don't know the percentage. Yeah. But it, but like I said, the, like there's white and then there's like white, you know? And then there's like black and then there's black, you know? It's interesting. Um... Cause yeah, and, and my friends, dude, I remember, I remember my friends from Congo would be like, no, 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 you're not black. To my other black friends are like, you're brown. We're black. And I'd be like, yeah, but true. <laughs> true, 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 true. Yeah. Dude, I miss them. I miss them. They're great people. Great fucking people. Very kind too. Yeah, there's a white population in Mexico. Of course there is. We don't have that many black people here. In Mexico, and there's not that many. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's not enough. There's not a lot of Afro Latinos in Mexico. You find Afro Latinos in uh, the Caribbeans. And also northern Tanzania. Not so much in Mexico. More on the southern border. They sang, jumped, and danced so gracefully with no care in the world. Interacting with them brings one world to mind. Freedom. Spending time alone in the wilderness and experiencing all the elements of nature was next level and opened up my mind to the fact that there are so many beautiful places in Africa. Damn, that that's a beautiful place, dude. One consistent thing with every stage of our journey was the feeling of how big and beautiful the world really is and also how little we are in the grand scheme. Our car. It's only when we That's a really a small crater. We really experience the world in its truest form. I hope my travels give you the motivation to set up on an epic adventure of your own. It's been a wild ride. That's all I have to share with you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll definitely see you guys on the next one. Peace. Uh, but I guess the whites that are in Mexico aren't considered real Mexican. They're just elites. No, 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 no. After I leave Mexico, I went to Africa. Bro, I kind of want to go to Africa after watching these fucking videos. And after watching um the best uh, ever food review show. I do it. It seems like those motherfuckers out there, bro, they eat good. They eat good. <laughs> like, tasty. Yeah. Yeah, very different to what I thought it would be when I was a kid. You know, because, like, when I was a kid, dude, all they told you about Africa was, like, it's AIDS ridden, you know, like, that type of shit. Poor. 
like there's a lot of like danger and you know what dude they kind of say the same thing about mexico you know a super unsafe place yeah some places are but others aren't you know yeah there's a lot of propaganda yeah yeah there's propaganda about everything dude you know i know about like uh white mexicans that are mexican are considered real mexicans no no we are considered real mexicans dude uh, and and like uh the, the like the tribal people do consider uh, like white people Mexicans they do it it's not it's not that much you know it's not um yeah it's not like that shit in Yucatan I feel I feel the safest I've ever felt anywhere hmm yeah well well it depends what part of Yucatan you are right depends what what part of Yucatan so many, you can't smoke tobacco, tobacco anymore? Merida. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's safe. Man. Yeah, Merida, Merida is going to be safe because, uh, you know, the tourism and shit. So, yeah. Um, they're just elites. You know what I will say, dude? You know what I will say about um, Mexico? Um... I've seen a lot of, um, there's a lot of like self hate. Oh, you heard Mexico ban tobacco uh, in public places. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw that today too. Um, yeah, they banned uh, smoke and tobacco in public places, but I don't like how, I, I don't understand. I don't know what type of public places they mean, maybe restaurants and shit like that. You know, because they banned that in the UK a couple of years ago, like a decade or so ago. But no, I was going to say, um, the racism that exists in Mexico, it's more self-hate from people who come from, like, the tribes. Uh, people who come from, like, um, small um, tribal backgrounds in Mexico. Uh, there's a lot of like self hate from them, especially the older people. Um, like the older people will look at the kid, and let's say like the kid's parents, you have like a somewhat of a tribal like girl or a tribal guy, and then you'll get like a white dish or person that looks like me, and they will look at the kid and they'll say, "Damn, the kid's too black," and it's like, "Fuck, bro," you know. And it's not the white people who are saying that, you know, it's like the tribal people. The tribal people are like, damn, he, they'll say Prieto, which Prieto is like uh, the mean way to say um, brown, right? They, they'll say, oh, está muy Prieto, like he's, he's too brown, you know, and it's like, like, why do you make that comment, you know? Why do you make that comment? Do you make that comment because you think his life will be harder? Or do you make that comment because you think it's better to be, like, white? You know, because you would have preferred to be white, you know? So, yeah, that's the kind of racism that I see in Mexico more often. Um, and I also see that there's, like, a hierarchy um, like I said, dude, like the tribal people, they will put themselves in a lower hierarchy to you because you're whiter than them. And it's like, bro. And you can tell by, by the way that they act around you or they act around other like whiter people and the way they act around uh, people that come from like the place that they come from, you know, and it's very sad because you don't see it from the white people towards them, right? You don't see it from somebody who looks like me towards them, but they just like uh, they place themselves there and it's weird because nobody places them there. They don't shit talk them. They just kind of put themselves in that position. And it's like, why? You know, I wonder why. 
I don't know if somebody told them something when they were younger, if it was their grandparents or their grandmothers or the, you know, but those types of comments, yeah, it's always like putting themselves down. Instead of somebody putting them down, they put themselves down and it's weird. It's very strange and I've seen it around the indigenous population. Yeah. I, I like I've seen it, dude. I've seen it. I and it's everywhere you look. And I wonder where it comes from. Is it like an energy that I give off to them and then they react that way? Is it how they get treated? Is it them being nice? Is it them treating uh people like me or somebody as other? You know? And maybe they're treating you as other, but they're being super nice, so they put you up on, like, a pedestal? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Yeah, my girl is Latina, and yeah, she doesn't want her kids to be brown. Lamau. Yeah, I, 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 I see it very often, dude, with the grandparents. The grandparents, dude. Very often. And it's not the people of my generation, or, like, my mom's generation, or my dad's generation. It's the grandparents. It's two generations ago. Yeah, they look at the kid and they're like, damn, he's too brown. Like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? <coughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. And you know what, dude? It's never like, it's never the white, um, it's never the white grandparent who says, damn, the kid's too brown. It's always the brown grandparent who says, damn, the kid's too brown. And I'm like, bro, what? You think of yourself like this? Really? You think so little of yourself? You know, because they look like them. Yeah. But yeah, that's the type of racism that I see over here. Which was different to the racism in England, right? Like the racism that I would see in England wasn't color based. It was more like, oh, you motherfuckers are uh, like Ukrainians. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, you guys are taking our jobs. Yeah. And the racism in England wasn't like black versus white. It was like um, English and, and the fuck everybody else, you know. Want to be more brown. It's the opposite. Actually, in America, the whites want to be more brown. Uh, yeah. Hey, bro, look, I think I look better with this tan on my whole body, right? Like, yeah. It is what it is. I don't know, bro. I can't fix it. I just, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird problem that I've seen. Tribes may act on instinct of protecting, uh, not my tribe equals what? No, but that's the thing in Mitzi, right? They see the kid and the kid looks like the people from their tribe. And they say, damn, he looks like the people from my tribe. Like, what the fuck, bro? You should be proud. You should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of your tribe. You should be proud of your people. You know, you shouldn't say, damn, you look like my people. What the fuck is that? Don't put yourself down, dude. Other people in, in the world will put you down. Don't put yourself down, you know? It should be, damn, he looks just like me. What a handsome motherfucker, you know? That should be the reaction, but it's not the reaction. The reaction is, damn, he just, he looks just like me. How unlucky. And like I said, I wonder if it's because... They've had a tough life and they don't want the kid to have a tough life or it's because they prefer whiteness, you know? So I don't know. I don't know if it's because they're mean or it's because they're empathetic. Basically, that's my issue. Because it could be either or. I would have to talk to them. But maybe they don't even know. 